Now let's talk about how we can optimize this further. So where were we? Well, if we look at where we've optimized things, we've got things going pretty well. We moved rate, uh, update here to the GPU to OpenCL, and if we run on the CPU, OpenCL runs it in parallel across four cores, it's about four times faster, and we run it on the GPU, OpenCL runs it really fast, running here. But if you look, overall we're spending a lot of our time doing other things still. So we haven't sped up our overall performance by all that much. Overall using the GPU, we're only running about four times faster. So updates really fast on the GPU, and it's a lot faster on the CPU, so that's great. But even when we use the GPU, we spend 34% of our time reading back data. So about a third of our time reading back data, and we're spending about half our time on the CPU. So that half the time there, this is the range, which we haven't moved over to the GPU. So now these are really limiting our overall speed up. And if we look at the CPU, we're spending about 16% of our time reading data. Still spending about the same amount of time on range, but why are we reading data on the CPU? So this is a little weird. On the CPU version of OpenCL, reading the data means just copying it back and forth between the CPU. We don't have another device to move it to, so this doesn't seem to make sense. And what it is is that this range code here is running in standard C code, and it's running on our CPU. And when we go to run update, we have to copy the data to the OpenCL runtime so it can use it. So what we're doing here is we're effectively copying the same data back and forth on the CPU. And OpenCL has a way to avoid this. It's called map and unmap. And if you did that for the CPU version, you could get rid of this time. All right. Now what we want to do is focus on the GPU. And the question is here, how can we reduce this read time? So the big problem we have right now is we're spending a lot of time reading. How can we go about reducing it? Well, we could try and reduce the amount of data, but this is going to be a challenge because we need to look at all of the data in order to figure out what the range is, what the minimum maximum is. We could move range to the GPU, but while moving range to the GPU should speed up this time down here, it's not clear how it would speed up the read time. We can't move read back data out of the main loop. We need this on every iteration to figure out if we're done. If we pulled it out of the main loop, we'd never know when we should finish. And obviously the answer isn't we can't because we will be able to fix this. What it turns out we need to do is we need to do both of these. If we move range to the GPU, then we don't have to read the data back every time. So by putting range on the GPU, we should be able to speed up the range here, as well as reduce the amount of time we spend moving the data. So let's take a look at that. So to get rid of the time reading the data, we need to keep the data on the GPU. This is you know, what we did in the first optimization also. And to do that, we need to move range to the GPU. And this means we won't have to send the data back every time. But range is a reduction. Remember, it's going to go over all of the data, all of the out data, and find the minimum maximum values. That's a reduction. So to do a reduction, we need some sort of synchronization, and doing synchronization on GPUs isn't so great. So how are we going to handle this? Well, we're going to take range, which is a reduction, and we're going to split it into two steps. In the first step, we're going to take all of our output data and divide it into a whole bunch of chunks, so 4,096 chunks. And for each chunk, we're going to calculate a minimum maximum. We're going to do this on the GPU. So in the end, we're going to have 4,096 individual minimums and maximums. So here's our output data. Thread 0 is going to go through and find the minimum and maximum for this chunk. Thread 1, the minimum and maximum for this chunk. And it's going to process it. And then we're going to get these outputs here. So it's going to tell us what's the minimum and maximum from thread 0 for this range, the minimum and maximum for thread 1 for that range, etc. And we're going to do all of this on the GPU. So that processing will happen quickly on the GPU. And now we have much, much less data here. So after we've done that in the GPU, now we just need to read back these values to the CPU and calculate the final minimum and maximum. So now we just need to copy 32 kilobytes instead of 64 megabytes back to the CPU. And on the CPU, we'll calculate the minimum and maximum for just those values. So this is going to reduce our data transfer. Instead of having to send all 64 megabytes, we just need to send 32 kilobytes of data, just those 4,096 partial reduction minimum maximums. All right, how do we do this? Well, here's our main loop again. We're still going to do update CL just as we did before, but now we're going to call range CL. And this is going to run on the GPU, the range kernel, which is going to create all of those 4,096 partial minimum and maximums to do it in parallel, keeping the data on the GPU. Now we need to read back the data, but now we're just reading back those 4,096 values, so it's much less data we'll be reading back. And then finally, on the CPU, we're going to now find the range over those much smaller amount of data, many fewer values. How do we do the range kernel? Well, here's the range kernel. And the first thing it does is figure out which parts to work on. So it's going to figure out the start and stop addresses for each thread. 
So here's the data we're looking at, and the start address is going to be at the beginning here, and the stop at the end. So this calculation up here just figures out where do I start and where do I stop. Then we're going to go over a loop for the data that we're supposed to touch, and we're going to figure out what are the minimum and maximum for that data, and finally write the results back. So we go and we write the results back into the correct location here. So this means each thread is going to choose its chunk of the data and go through and process it. All right, so what happens when we do this? Well, here are the results. We're three times slower. So we've actually slowed down range enormously by doing this. But we have managed to reduce the amount of time we spent reading. So we reduced the amount of time we spent reading by 65%. We went from 64 megabytes to 32 kilobytes, and we cut the time basically in half. It's a little strange. It's a huge reduction in data, but not a huge reduction in performance. But what's more worrisome here is the fact that we've made our range slower. We're now doing range in parallel on the GPU, and it's much, much slower. However, it is faster on the CPU. So we managed to paralyze on the CPU, and that was good.